So we're gonna be talking about the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. Solids have their particles tightly packed. You can see that in the picture here. Because their particles are tightly packed, notice in this given area, you have a lot of particles per unit volume compared to liquids or gases. Therefore, they're usually very high density. They have a definite shape and definite volume. When you drop a solid in a container, it doesn't fill the entire bottom, it just sits there. They only expand slightly upon heating. And because the particles are already so close together, they're basically incompressible, which means you can't push them together anymore. Liquids have a definite volume, but not a definite shape. So they're gonna take the shape of the container they're in. They're less dense than solids. Notice their particles are spread out more. They flow, meaning the particles slide past each other. They expand slightly when heated. And again, just like solids, because the particles are still very, very close to each other, they're almost incompressible. As far as density, solids are not always the most dense. One example that you're very familiar with is ice. Ice floats because ice actually gets further apart or the water molecules get further apart when it freezes. And if the particles are getting further apart, then the density is actually decreasing. So water is one of the few exceptions where the solid is actually less dense than the liquid. But generally, solids are the most dense and gases are the least dense. So for gases, the particles are so spread out that they don't even touch each other, unless they're colliding as they pass by each other. There's no definite shape or volume, so they're gonna completely fill whatever container they're in. They have a very low density, because again, their particles are so far apart, and they're gonna expand greatly when heated. So anytime you see a container of gas, it always says keep away from fire because if a little bit of heat is gonna cause that container to explode due to the increase in pressure. And because the gases are so far apart, they are very compressible. We can fit a lot of gas in a tiny container. If you need to pause the video to finish writing these down, go ahead and do so. As the temperature increases, average kinetic energy of a substance increases. Kinetic energy is the energy that a substance has due to its motion. Not all particles at a given temperature will have the same kinetic energy, but on average, the kinetic energy increases when temperature increases. So let's look at what that means. Here we have a sample of neon gas at negative 217 degrees Celsius. As I increase the temperature, notice how the molecules are moving. They start moving faster on average. Notice some of the particles aren't moving very fast and other molecules are moving, or particles are moving very quickly. So on average, the kinetic energy is increasing particles of neon. If I decrease the temperature, then the particles start moving slower, so they have less kinetic energy. And again, make sure that you're making note that some of the particles, if you stare at them, some of them are gonna be moving much quicker than others are. So which state of matter do you expect to have the greatest kinetic energy, solid, liquid, or gas, and why do you think that? I'm gonna pause the video and write down what you think. Restart when you have an answer. So before we answer the question, Let's look at an example. Here's that same neon. Here's solid neon, liquid neon, and gas neon. So again, we have solid. Notice it does have some kinetic energy. So all particles, whether it be solid, liquid, or gas, do have movement. 
just solids are vibrating and their vibrations are just so tiny that we don't perceive them. Liquids also are moving, they're flowing past each other. You can see that flow there. Occasionally, some of them get enough kinetic energy that they're able to break the attractions between them and turn into a gas. So that's what you're seeing there, a couple of the particles turning into gas. And then here, we have all the gas moving around. So you should be able to clearly see that gas has the most kinetic energy. So gas, we have more motion due to it being at a higher temperature. In order to go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, we increase the temperature. As we're increasing the temperature, the molecules start moving more. They're able to break the attractions between them, turning into the next phase. Let's start at the bottom with two that you're most familiar with. Going from a solid to a liquid. You should know what that one's called. If you put an ice, a piece of ice on a table and let it sit there, you're going to see it melting. So make sure that you are writing this picture down and writing what those different phase changes are called. The opposite of melting, when you put some water and you want to make ice cubes, you're going to stick it in the freezer so it can freeze. So melting and freezing are opposite um, changes. Over here on the right hand side, we have a gas to liquid and liquid to gas. So liquid to gas, you may have heard a couple of terms for that. Sometimes people say boiling or whenever you're sweating, the sweat turns into vapor and that's called evaporation. But the umbrella term for any time a liquid turns into a gas is called vaporization. Boiling occurs at the boiling point. Evaporation occurs below the boiling point. And again, vaporization is that umbrella term. You may want to write all three of those down. But vaporization is the main one that we're going to use. But you'll also see boiling. So gas to liquid, or the opposite of vaporization, is called condensation. That's what occurs in the clouds. Let's watch a quick video on condensation. We also see that when we have dew on plants. So in this video, when water vapor from the air comes in contact with a substance cooler than itself, the molecules are going to slow down. If enough of a difference is present, they are going to slow down so much that they form attractions and then liquefy. So we're going to see that happen here at a very fast rate. Notice we start seeing some droplets forming on the outside of the glass. I'm sure you've all had a glass of ice water whenever you've reached for it. You've noticed puddles forming around it. That water is coming from the air. It's not leaking out of the glass. So we can see our ring of condensation. We see our droplets there. So water or condensation is gas turning into a liquid. Two that you may not be familiar with. Dry ice, which you may see around Halloween, is when you go from a solid. So dry ice is a solid and it turns directly to a gas without passing through the liquid phase. That's sublimation. Notice directly from solid to gas, no liquid. Anything that can sublime can also undergo deposition or depositation by going directly from the gas to the solid phase. So here we're going to watch a quick video on iodine. Iodine is one of these substances besides carbon dioxide that undergoes sublimation and depositation at room temperature. Okay, so we have our iodine crystals in there. They're a purple solid almost blackish. Notice our iodine starting to sublime. When it sublimes, it's this purple vapor. The watch glass on top is cooler than the hot plate that it's on. So we're getting 
quite a bit of vapor produced. So again, it's on a hot plate, so it's heating these this solid up. So you can see on the watch glass that depositation occurred. They're occurring at the same time because it's opposite processes. Notice there's no liquid in the beaker. It's going directly from solid to gas. So those are the six phase changes that you need to be aware of. The law of conservation of mass says that mass cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So when a substance undergoes a phase change, the number of particles should not change. They're just gonna get closer or further. If it's being done in an open container, then maybe I'm gonna lose some of the particles to the atmosphere. But if it's done in a closed container, I'm gonna start with the same amount of particles before and after the change. So looking at this container, this container has what state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas? Which one would you suspect? If you said solid, you're correct. If you notice, the particles are very close together and they're very rigid. So they're not flowing past each other. When you see a rigid substance like that, that would be a solid. Also notice we have this empty space. If I had a liquid, it would fill the whole bottom of that container. What about this container on the right? What do you expect that to be, a solid, a liquid, or a gas? If you said gas, you're correct. Notice it's filling the entire container. Another thing to notice is this one has nine particles. This one over here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine particles. So when you're drawing your final product, you're drawing particle diagrams, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're conserving mass and the number of particles. If it asks you what phase change you just saw, you would first have to know that this is a solid and this is a gas, and going from solid to gas directly is called sublimation. So let's practice some of these. So you have three particle diagrams that you're gonna complete. Make sure that you put what state of matter it is in the box below the circle. So let's look at the first one together. It says a sample of copper metal is heated until it melts. So what state of matter do we think this one is? You said solid, you're correct. We know it's a solid because it says that it's copper metal. And again, I have a very rigid structure here. It's not in a square, so that's why it looks a little bit different than the last one. But again, they're all very close together. And it looks pretty um, repeating unit wise. All right, so if it melts, what state of matter are we going to have in this box? You said liquid, you are correct. The next thing that you should be looking at is how many particles did you start with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight particles, which means I should have eight particles over on the other side. When you draw your particles, you're gonna to wanna to have more space in them than you did when it's a solid. So here we have eight particles, and there's more space between them, but it's also not filling the entire container. So I still have some space on the top. So it's, for the most part, filling the bottom part, or the bottom three-fourths of the container, and they're not so rigid and repeating anymore. So here we have a liquid. When we're doing our drawings, your drawings don't have to look exactly like the ones that I'll show as a possible answer. Again, mine's a possible answer. The main things that you're looking for is, are your particles close together? So if they're a solid, they should be close together. If they're liquids, then they should be more spread out. If they're gases, then they should be even more spread out.
and filling the entire container, while liquids don't fill the entire container, nor do solids. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and try this one. Fill in your states of matter and your particle diagram. So here we started with a solid, it's sublimation. We can see that's a solid and they told us it's a crystal. Sublimation is going from a solid to a gas, so this box should have been a gas. And therefore we should have eight particles, because we started with eight still. And they should be spread out and filling the entire container. Last one, go ahead and pause the video and try this last one. Restart when you're done. Okay, so this problem, we only had five to start with, so you should only have five particles in your final product. Also, you should have some space between the particles, so if yours are all next to each other, then that's not gonna be a liquid, and condensation should be going from a gas to a liquid. And they should be on the bottom half of the circle. They shouldn't be filling the entire circle since it's a liquid, 